uh, social programs that compensate for uh, women's um, women falling behind men in order to have uh, to be uh, have a strong um, economic uh, uh, and financial kind of uh, nest egg or, or to be strong financially. This is what the Quran is recognizing, and 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 giving that obligation to to men in their family to take care of of uh, the women of their household. Now, what some men have said is that this verse says that men um, have authority over women in all society, and they use that verse to say that means that women shouldn't work, that women shouldn't take public office, that women um, should not take any position of, of governance or leadership in society, and that is a huge uh, overextension of this verse to these other uh, uh, to these other situations, that is denied, in fact, by the very example of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, because when we look in his society, we see that in fact he appointed women to be in positions of authority, that he um, that he accepted and encouraged women to be uh, uh, economically strong and independent, and that he himself uh, praised women who were um, uh, um, putting themselves forward in the public sphere, people like Nusayba, who was a great warrior, who in fact defended the Prophet Muhammad in the Battle of Uhud with her own body and her own life. And she was highly praised by the Prophet Muhammad and by all the Khulafa after him, um, who allowed her to continue to fight with the Muslims in the battles. Um, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, accepted Nusayba's bay'ah um, in the uh, Pledge of Aqaba. So she was a representative, one of the representatives of the people of Medina. So she, she made that oath of allegiance, as did other women on, her, on behalf of herself, her husband, and none of the husbands of the Sahaba made the oath of allegiance for their wife. The women had to come and make the oath of allegiance themselves as individuals, but also uh, Nusayba was one of the women who also was a representative of the community as a whole. So we see that unfortunately there are men who will use the Quran, who will selectively take verses and make an overextension and use that to put women in a lesser position than men. And uh, unless we, we deal with that, then unfortunately many women who don't have a lot of knowledge of the Quran and of Quran interpretation and of fiqh will be taken in by that and feel that Islam requires them to occupy a lesser position in society. What is the meaning of hijab and its function in Islam? Well, um, uh, what the Quran uh, asks for women to do is, is to take their khimar. The Quranic wor word is khimar. Khimar means a headscarf. And this is in Surah An-Nur. Take it and to use it to cover, um, to cover the Jiyub. A jeeb is, is like an opening in the neck that would allow you to pull a shirt over your head. Um, now, of course, we have buttons and things like that, but in that time you would just simply have an, an opening in the neck. So what the Quran asks is for, is for uh, the believing women to take their head coverings and to you know, cover the, the neck and the chest area. Also, uh, the Quran um, asks Muslim women to take their jalabib, their, their, their outer garment, and uh, to wear it in a way so that they will be known as Muslim women. So what does that mean? That means that taken together, the Qur'an and the Sunnah of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, says that, that there should be a way for Muslim women to identify themselves um, in public as Muslim women. Um, and that this dress should uh, should include a head covering um, and uh, you know a modest uh, covering of the body. Now, some people think that that is there are certain specific garments that should be uh, worn, but uh, scholars um, and, and the practice of Muslims throughout you know history has been that that as long as a woman wears clothes that functionally provide this kind of identification and covering, that that is sufficient, that she's fulfilling the purpose. 
Um, unfortunately, there are many people who don't read the Qur'an, so they things, say things like, uh, the Qur'an requires only women to dress modestly. I'm not sure what verse they're referring to, and I would like to ask those women or those men, you know, what, what verse in the Qur'an are they talking about? Um, the Qur'an, in fact, does require uh, a specific kind of cover, um, but it also requires men to, uh, to do something as well. And in fact, in Surah Tanur, men are asked, even before women, to lower their gaze. So this is a reciprocal obligation. This is an obligation of men to be respectful of women, to not leer at women, to not sit by the roadside and stare at women, not sit in coffee shops and make women uncomfortable while they're walking back and forth. Uh, in fact, there's a, there's a hadith where the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, explicitly said uh, and ordered men not to sit by the roadsides because it would make, uh, it would make those passerbys uncomfortable. But if you have to sit by the road, then give those who are passing by their rights. Unfortunately, the culture in many, in many Muslim societies now is that men are lining the roadsides, lining the roads in cafes and others, staring at whoever whoever walks by. So it, it's very important that men also fulfill their obligation and that if they are sitting you know, outside, that they should not be staring at the women who are passing by, no matter how they're dressed. Um, that's their obligation. Uh, so this is a reciprocal obligation. It's a mutual obligation um, to have a wholesome society, to have a society in which um, men and women can work together can interact together um, in in a way that is that is chaste, that is uh, conductive to um, supporting families um, that are that are functioning well, um, and uh, that is the, the the whole purpose of the hijab. As a Muslim American, what responsibility responsibility do you feel you have in building bridges of understanding and peace among cultures and religions? You know, there's so many misunderstandings uh, uh, about Muslims and about Islam in American society. And that's something that I spend a lot of time doing is to try to correct those misunderstandings. But it's not just a question of, um, of ideas. It's also incumbent upon the Muslim American community to uh, show in their actions that they're part of the society, that, that we care about uh, our neighbors, no matter what their religion, whether they are, are people of faith or no faith. We have obligations to contribute to the welfare of the society. We have obligations to all children, whether they're the children of Muslim families or not. Um, we cannot simply withdraw our children into Muslim enclaves, Muslim schools, and forget about uh, all of the children who are in public schools and getting poor education. If we choose to put our children in Islamic schools, then we also have to make sure that with our voting and with our, um, uh, our, uh, the policies that we support, that those children who are in public schools have an excellent education, that they have health care, that they um, are in an environment that is, that is uh, uh, that is um, healthy for them because our children are our first obligation but they're not our last obligation. So Muslims have to demonstrate with their actions that they care about all people. Um, at the same time, Muslim Americans have, have a, have a um, responsibility to try to convey to our Muslim brothers and sisters in other parts of the world that America is much more complicated than they, than they think it is. And, um, and it's painful for American Muslims to, um, uh, who are part of this society to have this sense that there, there are some Muslims in other parts of the world that would like to see this country harmed. Um, we, we agree, I think all American Muslims would agree that there have been um, terrible tragedies and there have been policies that have been harmful, not just to Muslims, but to other people, to other vulnerable people in the world. But this is our country, and, and we're working to improve it. And we're working with those of other faiths to improve this.